about, boy, 22 years ago, I think it was, 23 years ago, one of my first years teaching, I decided to do a whole bunch of egg demonstrations for Easter. That'd be kind of fun. So I had eggs spinning and trying to stand an egg on its end and uh, what else? Um, oh, eggs floating and sinking. You can tell if an egg is raw or not by whether you can spin it, uh, things like that. I thought, I wonder if I could do the Pringles rocket demonstration, which involves filling an empty Pringles can with hydrogen and lighting it with a blown egg. Hmm, that was worth a try. So, um, a blown egg, for those unfamiliar with it, and I've got a couple of them in here. Little hole on the top, bigger hole in the bottom. And um, I'll give you a little lesson on that. The, if you're gonna blow an egg, you break those little holes, little, I like to use a triangular file and kind of tap the thing there, a little nail works fine. But you always want to wash the egg off first before you put your mouth to it because there's no telling where that egg has been. Well, actually you know exactly where the egg has been. That's why you've got to, you want to wash it off, trust me. Um, actually, when you do that, it, you have to blow quite hard. If you, and if you don't scramble the yolk up inside there first, you end up breaking this side of it. It's a little tricky. I've got something I'll show you. I don't actually do it that way anymore. I do it this way. Here's an egg that's been blown. It's empty. Notice the Hole on bottom, no hole on top, just one hole. I do it this way, then I break the other hole later on. This is blown with just one hole. Hmm, wondering how. And also, I don't have to use any kind of, I mean, it, it hurts sometimes here when you, you have to blow with that much force. So this is just water dripping out if I just wash it out. How do I do that? I'll show you a little lesson in that. This is a raw egg. And by the way, the way you can tell it's raw, if you try to spin it doesn't spin. If, it, if you can spin it fast and it stands up on end, then it's a hard-boiled egg. With this one, raw, the yolk is kind of moving around in there and not letting you spin it fast. So, over a sink here, like this, until you make a little hole. There it is. It takes a little while. Make it a little bigger. Okay. That hole's maybe about uh, three or four millimeters across. And then you take a thin stem pipette and use it for two things. Go in there and scramble that <laughs> yolk, get it, make sure it's all broken up. But also, this is the fun part, you're gonna use that for pumping air up in. And you have to do it obviously several times, it takes a while. Oh, I rushed it a bit there, and it came out the side here a bit. But that's how you can, and I'm just going to put this down here. <laughs> but that's how I made this, blow, oh, sorry, this blown egg with just one hole on the bottom, no hole on the top. And then I tapped a hole on the other side to do these. That's how I do all of them. When we do our Easter eggs at our house, no one, eats, no one likes egg salad or hard-boiled eggs in our house. But they love French toast, they love scrambled eggs. So we do it like this, decorate the eggs after they've already been blown, and uh, then hide them, and if you don't find them, it's no big deal. They don't start to smell up the house afterward. So, there you go. Now, back to the demonstration. I have here an egg, again, blown top and bottom. Also, there's that membrane on the inside. So I put this in the oven for a little while and dried them out. This one was in the oven a little too long, so it's got a little brown spot on it. But I made a nice little cute smiley face. Okay, you can get a picture of that there. And I'm gonna cover the top hole with a piece of electrician's tape, okay? The bottom hole is gonna be for the reaction I've got between the zinc and the HCl. Um, does this look familiar to you? <laughs> Again, this is just that thin stem pipette. A little trick here. That doesn't fit very snugly in the hole of rubber stopper, so a little wrap of electrician's tape makes it a nice little snug fit. Okay, this is about two to three molar HCl. Doesn't have to be very strong. I got a bunch of zinc in there, and I'm just gonna pour this in just like that to give me a nice little production of hydrogen gas, that zinc and HCl, and I'm gonna capture that hydrogen gas in this egg. Now that egg is filling with hydrogen gas 
from the top down because hydrogen, less dense than air, right? Hydrogen used to be used in the blimps, dirigibles, until the uh, fateful day of the Hindenburg. We got a good production of hydrogen. I'm sure I've got this completely flushed out, all the air flushed out. That's important to do. You want to have pure hydrogen in there. You don't want to wait too long, either. This reaction dies down. You're still talking, talking, talking. That hydrogen leaks out even through the pores in the egg. You know an egg is porous because that chick lives in there for how long before it hatches? It's getting oxygen through that eggshell. So anyway, so here we go. I'm going to now take the tape off, put my finger over the top of it. Look at my handy little explosion shield here, made of a cut up soda bottle and a little holder down here. And I'm going to, you hear a little pop? That says the hydrogen's leaking out the top pole, and you really don't see it burning that much because hydrogen burns with a nearly invisible flame. But you might want to cover your ears. <laughs> a little late on that one. But look at how this, the little explosion shield, managed to stop most of the shrapnel so that no one got shell-shocked, right? <laughs> uh, my little egg holder flew over there. But why the delay? Why didn't it go off as soon as I put the, the flame to it? Well, I'll tell you why. Hydrogen, pure hydrogen, does not represent a combustible mixture. If this room right now were completely filled with 100% pure hydrogen, and I went like that, kablooey? No, in fact, guess what? I couldn't even do that. That requires oxygen. I'd be sparking this thing, there'd be hydrogen in the room, but nothing. Hydrogen reacts with oxygen, and the product, of course, is good old H2O. The vapor that was produced by that made the humidity in the room go up a little bit just now. So what was going on? Well, as soon as I took the tape off, hydrogen started leaking up to that top hole. I lit it, and there was a little flame burning there. I don't know if the, the camera picked that up or not. I bet it didn't, because it's almost invisible. You might see a little flicker of orange, and that is actually from the calcium in the eggshell, the calcium flame test. But aside from that, you don't see much of anything. And all of a sudden, kablooey. Now, you don't have to worry about the flame backing up into the egg, because the egg had pure hydrogen in it. Well, had pure hydrogen, but of course, as the hydrogen's leaking out through the top hole, think about what's coming in through that bottom hole to replace it. Air containing oxygen. And when it reaches a combustible mixture, I don't say the combustible mixture, it doesn't have to reach a special stoichiometric ratio for it to go off, not at all. It's not a good demonstration for stoichiometry. In fact, hydrogen and air have a huge range of combustible mixtures. Okay, now if this room were filled with 99% hydrogen, 1% air, no, that's not combustible. But I think about 90% hydrogen, 1% air is. It's got a wide range there. Shaka Shiri sp spends a lot of time in his ripes discussing the entire range of combustible mixtures for hydrogen and air. So this reached a combustible mixture. The flame could backfire and kablooey. I have a little PowerPoint um, presentation I'm going to show that does that. I like incorporating PowerPoint animations. And they're not too hard to, to, uh, to put together once you get the hang of it. So. Um, we see here is the egg, okay? And of course, it looks like it's got nothing in it, but there is air on the inside. And of course, there's air on the outside, so I've got the air there as kind of a blue haze there. And uh, there was a small hole on top. We covered that with a little piece of tape. Larger hole on bottom. We introduced the uh, tube, right? The flask. And I filled it then with hydrogen gas, and see how it filled from the top down. It pushed the, pushed the air out, OK? Then we took it off, OK? We removed the tape. The hydrogen was leaking out there. Let me back up a bit. Hydrogen was leaking out to that top hole. I'll do it again, because it's less dense. We actually brought a flame over. You heard a little pop noise when I first lit it, and then there was this invisible flame burning on top of the egg. Well, all the while that was going on, remember what's happening at the bottom. As that hydrogen leaks out, air was creeping in through the bottom, mixing with the hydrogen in there. And when it reached a combustible mixture, boom. 
So, I think it's nice to recap a demonstration with something more visual than just the, the words or to accompany with that, especially if it's something like this that you can then put on a website and have students go and revisit. So, I call this one the egg explosion, right? And um, it's a fun one to do around Easter time, but really it, it incorporates so much with uh, combustion ratios, and um, it's a fun one to do any time of the year. Thank you.